Exactly. So we're going three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 60. 60 on the ball. Ian Dawes, a mill legend. Thanks for joining us, Dawesy. Hello there. That's all right. No probs. How you been, mate? You good? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah, can't complain. Oh, good, good. So I said uh, just off air, we did this before about, I think it was the three-year anniversary of the YouTube channel. We did it before oh, a it? game outside the den. There was people walking past. There was police horses. Yes, no, I remember. I remember doing it, and I remember the horses. I was, I was, I think we all started to panic that we were going to get trampled on by the horses. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, we should be. Good. There's no horses in my front room, mate. So as long as there's, none, right. in yours. there's none, none in mine either. So you're all right. <laughs> Brilliant. So obviously, Mill podcast uh, and, and fan channel, and usually we go through the Mill stuff, which we will. But there's a couple of things that I wanted to ask you about your time at QPR. Obviously, firstly, how did that come about? Queens Rangers being a boy from Croydon, weren't you? I was from Croydon, yeah. I was actually going to say, would it be okay if I just say something before we get into all the football stuff? Of course it is, mate. Uh, sure, just, mate. just uh, you know, obviously, uh, just to say the sympathy uh, with uh, Bob Pearson's uh, yeah. family um, after, you know, the loss. You know, it's good, good man and a good mm. scout for me all. So, such, a, such a shame. Um, We're going to get into that. And I always, I always call him the Highlander because he seemed like no matter what, Era I interview Emil will play from whether it's the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, the noughties. He seems timeless, mate. He seems to seem like he was more than a scout. He was just a lot yeah. of players not fully credited. No, no, it was really okay. So and so was the manager, but Bob Pearson was the one who signed me. You know, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, he he, he found a lot of players, didn't he? I mean, let's be yeah. fair. Um, too, yeah. Probably too many to mention, so we won't we won't do that. But obviously, we got a, a Millwall like WhatsApp site and. So many of them, you know, are on there still, and you know, sending their regards. So, so it's it's, it's good. Yes, yeah, such a shame, mate. And I see, yeah, that, um, yeah, definitely. Not fondly remembered though. And I was pleased myself personally because I heard so much about him through these shows. It fascinated me. And Brian Orn told me a couple of a couple of years ago he's not been too well. Um, and I never ever saw a photo of him. Never, you know, we just hear loads about someone. You just want to know what they look like. But when he obviously passed, sadly, the club posted some. Um, some nice photos of him. There's one of him in the middle of the Doc and George Graham at the, at the ground. Yeah. It's a shame yeah. that people only sometimes get the you know get the credit and the outpouring and love after they're gone, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Well, that's 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 to be fair. That's probably that probably is the uh, way it is, isn't it? But, yeah. But I think he's you know a lot of respect from you know, a lot of the players. So um, mm-hmm. and obviously sympathy for the family. So yeah, so, yeah. So. Top man. I think actually there's been. Um, yeah. I see earlier on, I think his grandson posted on Twitter, there's like a like a little funding page or something. So I'll put that in the description below if people yeah, want to donate. That'd be um, nice. Yeah, be good, be good. Getting on to your career. So you started at QPR. How did you make your way over there from? Well, the weird thing was I was I started at Chelsea. <laughs> oh, real? Both I of went, West London. I went to Chelsea as a schoolboy. Right. Um, and we were at Mitcham at the time. And then they, they sold their training ground to Palace. Yeah. And then we ended up going up to Stanford Bridge and training on the car park. And it was not the best, to be honest. It was awful. <laughs> so for some reason or other, I don't know how, um, but QPR saw me playing in a in a game. And they said, would I like to come to them as a like a schoolboy? Um, so because the Chelsea thing was going a bit rocky and it wasn't so good, I decided then to give QPR a try. Um and it worked out all right in the end. So, yeah, it went well for you, mates. I, I've done thing I want to ask you about about QPR. I saw this. I think it got shared on like a an eighties or a nineties podcast that I listened to, and it's a clip from QPR. You was in the room, and they've got like a a mind coach. So you will score with your head. You will do this. He's like in a classroom, and you're all like, "What is? It's like really like new age, obviously in the eighties." Was I asleep? <laughs> 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 yeah, everyone was like, "What is this geezer on about?" And he was like, "Yeah, I'm I think I don't, I, I don't know. I just don't think we were we were into that sort of thing back in them days." To be honest, yeah. um, I think it's more more around nowadays, isn't it? I think, but um, no, yeah, it was quite wasn't... revolutionary for the time. It was, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, to be honest, I can't remember it, but I'm sure I was there. Um, but yeah, I was probably asleep. So, <laughs> <laughs> who was your manager at QPR? The manager, when I very first, as a schoolboy, as an apprentice, it was uh, Tommy Doherty. Ah, uh, right, okay. And then he he left, and then Terry Venables came, and he oh. signed me straight away, and then it just kicked off from there, really. 
What was he like, Terry Venables? Uh, to be fair, uh, no disrespect to any other managers, I would say he was probably the best I played under. Mm. And he I played under some well, good ones, he? So. He, he, was, he was a bit of a crooner, wasn't he? A bit of a crooner. A bit of a singer, wasn't he? He was. He did love all that. Yeah, he was a. He was a definitely a wide. He was a wide boy. Um, but he was, you know, he, the the thing with him was he was good with youngsters, but he yeah. was also good with the older ones. You know, the more experienced pros. He he could handle them as well. So yeah, and um, another a teammate of yours at Loftus Road, David Seaman. David Overlap Seaman, yeah. yeah. What was that like? Play a very young. Yeah, Three pony goal, the goalkeeper. Yeah, very good goalkeeper. He wasn't there long, to be fair. No. Um, I think he was only a probably season and a half, and he and he went. So yeah, he went. A good player. Yeah, great keeper, mate. And obviously great. done very well at Arsenal. It's a great start to the to your career. Venables as manager, and then uh, Seaman as your teammate. I suppose it all went downhill for me. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> <laughs> so you left QPR in 1988. You signed for newly promoted Millwall, of course, brought to the club by the dock. I did, yes. Yeah, well, the, it, it happened, basically. We had a, a pre-season friendly. Right. I think it was just before the season was going to start. And uh, unfortunately, like, Nicky Coleman got injured, didn't he, in the game. Right. And obviously, I knew Frank McClintock reasonably well. And because um, Nick got injured, they were... Sort of, I suppose after a, a, a left back, so they decided Ooh. to uh, approach approach the club for me, really. So, yeah. so that's how it all started, really. Yeah, let's clear that one up nice and early because it is in my notes. You said they're looking for a left back, a right footed left back, a right footed left back. Yeah, they didn't was know that. that you, to be fair, always... a lot of people didn't know I wasn't left footed. Yeah, no, mate, you was really, really good, and again. All credit to you. It's quite revolutionary at the time. We're like you was an attacking fullback as well. You cut in. You create a lot of goals. You scored a few goals. Was that well, how did that come about? You end up playing on the other well, side. Well, it's weird because I think it just started. It started at QPR. To be fair, where obviously we had a guy called Warren Neal, so right. we were, we both came through the, the the apprenticeship route, and he was a right back as well. And it just I don't know. There was just there was just a gap because Ian Gillard was sort of coming to his end, and I just thought, well, well maybe I'll give it a try there. As a left back, you know, see how Ooh. it goes, just to give you know, give me a chance, really. So yeah, just sort of started there, and it took over, really. Did you prefer it? Yeah, did you find your game was better on the left hand side? Um, I don't know. I because I, I never really played right back very often. I played there a few times, um, and I didn't mind it because obviously you, you're taking the f taking the ball on your natural foot all the time, aren't you? Really, as a right yeah. back. Um, but yeah, just it did feel a bit weird playing right back the times I have played there. Oh, really? Oh, fair enough. Um, you just sort of got so used to being, you know, on the left hand side, really. So, mm. oh, nice. You signed for a club on the up, promoted to the top tier for the first time in their history. Where was QPR at this point? Were they, were they, what would now be championship? Or were they top, top division as well? They were still in the same flight, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, um, yeah, of course, because we beat them 3 2, didn't we, at the, at the Den once? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. So why did you, I mean, did Millwall make a good bid for you or did you, was you unhappy at QPR? Or just... Um, I just wanted to play um, and I just felt I wasn't going to be playing as much as I wanted to, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It wasn't anything to do with money, to be honest. I wasn't that, I wasn't money or orientated, unfortunately. I probably wish I was now, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, and I just wanted to play football and I just felt maybe... I wasn't going to get the chance at QPR like I had been, you know. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, chance came. I mean, I went up to Coventry. Coventry wanted to sign me. That was uh, what I think I went up there really about because at the time Coventry were quite high up then. Um, but yeah, no, I was, I was, I'm, I'm born and bred in, you know, in Croydon. So I'm a London boy, really. So, yeah. So the closer we got to Coventry, it was like, oh, no, I don't think I want to come up here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah in a way, trust, the Mill thing was, was good because it was just down the road, really. 1988 to 1995, 225 appearances, five goals. What was it like, uh, first impressions of the club and signing under the dock? Um, it was totally different, totally different to QPR. Um, the in intensity was was more. Uh, in the way we played, um, 
I remember getting a couple of bollockings a couple of times. So I was trying to play into midfield and uh, I had the doc shouting at me. No, we no, no. Because obviously we got the two two centre forwards that were, you know, class acts and that. So we wanted to play into them all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So it was it was it was different in the way they wanted. To, you know, Millwall played and the way QPR played. But you sort of, I suppose, you got used to it in the end, and you know, got on with it basically. Yeah. I don't think we was. I know a lot of people said, "Oh, we was we was a lumpy and get around the strikers sort of team," but they was that good, weren't they? That it wasn't really. You know, he's missing out the midfield and getting, you know, especially with, with Briley and Erlock there for the knockdowns. It was, it yeah. was and good wingers as well. Was yeah, oh, no, I, didn't mean, I, didn't mean, I didn't mean it uh, like that in, in the aspect that we oh, were no, just I know you up, you just up, up, the, up the field. It was, he wanted us to play more into the centre forwards because yeah. they could hold it up. Uh, they could flick it on. Um, I mean, they, was, they were both really good in the air. The centre, centre halves were going up to win the ball with them nine times out of ten it wouldn't go very far it probably just drop down and as you say with with Briley and Terry Erlock you know they were good in that aspect that they they win the next ball and get it out to the wingers I mean their crossing was was really good Callahan, Jimmy Carter uh so was it Stevie Lawrence wasn't it George well? Lawrence George yeah. Lawrence sorry yeah. sorry George uh yes um so yeah they were good at getting the ball in the box and to be fair Cascarino and Sheringham were, were fantastic in the air so mm. created so many chances So you signed for a club on the up so I was thinking about this earlier because I've heard some fantastic stories of pre-season tours and Terry Erlock covered in tar drunk on a beach somewhere so when you went to Mere Wall you had the pre-season tour was that sort of an end of season celebration as well or was it straight into business when you got there? I didn't have I didn't have the pre-season with Mere Wall no. I ba- basically, um, the the game that we played against Mill at, at the Den, yeah, was in the week. I think it was either a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and then the first game was on the Saturday. Oh, is that? So, oh, so, so, ba- sort of like so basically, I just went straight from QPR to to Millwall. Oh, straight in, no missing. Yeah. You mentioned him uh, at the start of the show, Bob Pearson. Did he play a part in you coming to the club as well, or was it all? The I dot? think he was. Yeah, I mean, I knew Bob, and I knew I knew Frank McClintock as well, as well obviously because he was a QPR man, wasn't he as well? Of course, so, yeah. Uh, so I knew Frank because I, I I remember uh, the the game. We would, I mean, Frank was giving me so much stick from the uh, touchline, <laughs> but I was giving it back. So <laughs> giving you a lot of shit, and then the following week, you're he's, he's your new new guy. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So. Nice one. So 88, 89, first season, straight into the deep end. 33 games, one goal, and we'll get on to that goal. What was your first impressions of your teammates? At the oh, den? I thought they were excellent side. Um, great, great team spirit. Um, their work ethic was magnificent, um, which obviously stems from the management. Uh, and to be fair, the, the players were really good. I mean, there was all the way through the team. I mean, the only thing we probably lacked was depth, which a lot of mm. teams probably going up from the, the championship are exactly the same now. You know, they, they're, they're starting probably 12, 13 are excellent, but mm. they just haven't got the depth if they get injured. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, you look at all the the players that they had, they, they went, a lot of them gone on and played somewhere else at a higher mm. level. Um, so it shows they were, you know, good quality players. Yeah, but so I'm not just saying this because you're on. You're obviously really fondly remembered by Millwall fans. And I actually put a, the goal you scored, um, I'll get onto in a minute, on social media. And I said, how much money, honestly, do you think Dawes would be worth in, in today's money? What was the actual fee from QPR? Do you remember? I don't know. I think it was only about 150 or something like that. Really? That's grand, by the way, for the younger players, not the younger viewers, not quid. Um, 150 grand. I honestly record in today's money, you'd be worth near a five million. You reckon? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll go for back, that. Should we try and get a back payment? Yeah, I think I should, shouldn't I? Can you try? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant, mate. So your debut was, was against Aston Villa then? It was, yeah. Aston yeah, Villa was, away, yeah. first game in the top flight, two new up, two goals from Cascarino. I think you had a hand in – you definitely had a hand in one. I had a hand in one. I think it was the second one. Yeah, really um, good goal. Put the cross in and he scored. But I also think I had a hand – Something to do with their first goal as well. I think I was running back. Horney came running out and booted the ball and hit me straight in the gut or on my arse or something. Probably my arse because it was so big. 
Um, and it went straight straight to their centre forward. He knocked it in. So yeah, so it was a mixed emotions that game. Mm, I think it was Alan. Was it Alan McAnally scored two for them? And I think it might have been. Yeah, yeah. I think it was, mate. I think it was. But what I mean, especially so, I always have people in and around. I want to get on and. Obviously, obviously, where I know Stu and Faye, I knew I could if, get you back on if needed. But when they released the new kit the other week, I don't know if you've seen the new away kit, the yellow kit, really reminded me of that that time, your era, and that, yeah. that, that game and that kit. I've not seen the kit, but yeah, no, it was the yellow kit that we, we, we played in that game, wasn't it? Yeah, fucking love that kit. Loved it. Anyway, um, yeah, so it was a good first season, 10th in the division. We finished. Well, and- we, were, we were at one stage. I think we were... Fifth or third or something like that. Something you know. Yeah. Something really, really we mad. I think we went top for like a day or something like that. I, th- well, I think we were very. We were in the top five for quite a good period. Mm. Um, as I say, I just think um, towards the end, I wouldn't say tiredness, but I think it got to us. As I say, because because of the depth in squad. Yeah. I think because we were using the same players all the time. It, it's a it's a hard hard season. It's a, it was a hard season, and you know the, the teams were good teams. Maybe they worked us out a little bit more second game or whatever. So yeah, we struggled yeah. a little bit towards the end, but but yeah, I mean what a what a what a season it was. What was it like playing at the Den? What was it like? Sorry, playing at the Den. Oh, it was yeah. I I, I love the old Den. I mean, I like the new ground, but the old Den was. Um, Something special. I mean, obviously, I went, I played there with, uh, with QPR once, and you know, it was like, oh my, oh my god! Especially as a fullback. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, especially as a fullback. But just walking out the tunnel, it was like everyone was like over the top of you, shouting at you. Well, I won't say what they were shouting, but <laughs> um, but yeah, screaming and hollering, and you just thought, oh my god! And then I ended up joining you. So there you go. There you go. You saw you saw how good it can be from the other side of the fence or tunnel. With our fans, oh, yeah, lovely. I mean, they 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 they're very loyal, aren't they? And they, and to be fair, I always felt if you gave your all and you tried as much as you could, I think they were with they're with you all the time. You know, mm. yeah, you did always give hundred percent. But on top of that, as I said, you was actually a really really good player. Both both no, you was predominantly right for you, but you could play with your left. Scored a few goals. You remember your first goal for the club? Yeah, um, I can't remember my first one. I remember some of them. Um, but your first what... goal is, is a game. So I put this on social media yesterday. It's a game that I always remember. There's, there's a few I remember from the old day, not loads. We left there when I was 13, but we played Luton at home. Um, and we was 3 0 up after about 25 minutes. I was eight years old. I turned to my old man and I said, I didn't really know the rules. And I said to him, Well, they stopped this. And he said, Look down. I said, What do you mean, stop this? So they stopped the game early. I, I didn't even know that could be a thing to be 3 0 up at half time, let alone 20 minutes. Eight <laughs> years old, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, this is it going to stop or are they going to carry on? And he, he laughed at me. But you got, I think it was the uh, third goal. Cali sideways free kick. Oh, Ball yes. Out yeah. your feet, pass yeah. Les in the top bin. Yeah, no, I remember that. I remember um, the, the, the goals I probably remember more the, the season that we actually went down. I scored, I think, about three in that season, I think. Four. Oh, was it four? Was it? Oh, sorry, yeah. four. Yeah. So maybe maybe it was a bit of my fault because I was too far forwards and we're not defending <laughs> enough. I don't know. <laughs> well, funny enough, so you scored that one goal that season, and then we'll get onto the um. Well, let's get onto it now. Actually, the uh, the next season where you just played forty six games and scored four goals. I know. Then after, I mean, we'll get onto this later down the line. But after that, you never scored again. I didn't know. Obviously, that could be maybe with a change of the manager, which we'll get onto. Um, the favourite person on this podcast, Bruce Rioch. But um, before we get into that, let's talk about <laughs> the 89-90 season. Uh, we, obviously, we went down, but we won three and drew two of our first five games. And after beating Coventry 4-1 at the Den, that's another game I remember because it was my schoolmate Paul Reeves and Matt Blink's joint birthday party before, we were sat third. Yeah, it, just, um, yeah. it, just went, it just went downhill quite quickly, didn't it? It did, yeah. No, the Bruce, um, Bruce Rioch era was uh, not not the uh, the best, to be fair. Uh, oh, no, which no, was no. which was um, weird because when he first joined, I thought it would be good. Um, I liked the way he wanted to play, 
But it was just him, just him as a person. He was just a strange, strange man. Yeah, we've um, heard, you, you're not alone in saying that, mate. But sorry, yeah, just um, getting back to the season we went down, obviously Doc was in charge. And uh, the wheels come off. We lost 5-1 to United. And after that, we beat Sheffield Wednesday 2-0 on the 23rd of September. Then we only won one more league game, which was in December against Aston Villa. Which, why do you think things started to go south under the dock? Um, we lost a few players, didn't we? Obviously. Um, Terry, we, Cass. Yeah, which, you know, if you lose you lose people like that, they're, they're irreplaceable, really, to be honest. I mean... You know, we had um, we had the, the lovely Dean Oryx come in, and you know, it was a great. He was a good player, mm. but no disrespect to him, he probably wasn't in the the, the Cascarino and the Sheringham standard, if that makes sense. Yeah, really um, well, so yeah, it was it was difficult, and and I think also if you look at the season before, towards the end, I think teams were were understanding how we played, mm. uh, and I think they they they. The next time we played them in the following season, then they 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 changed the way they played maybe, um, and and we just didn't seem to be able to change our way if that was yeah you it'll, know, be a, it'll be a bit of a second way. season syndrome you know we, I think we needed to maybe try and play a little bit more football at times, mm. um, but we we just we just couldn't so unfortunately it was a. Uh, not the best of seasons, really. It was a hard. It was a hard season for like fans and and the players, especially after the the season we had before. Yeah, exactly. And then so Doc loses his job, and then getting back to Bob Pearson, I think he actually took over temporarily, didn't he? Before I think, yeah, he did for a period. I think him and Frank did, didn't they? I think. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, was it Frank um, Sibley? Is it Sibley? Oh, I don't know. Who that is the guy from QPR. I think he came over. Oh, really? I'm sure, he did. I might be wrong. I'm yeah. just a long time ago now. My memory is terrible yeah. now. Because <laughs> um, I, I remember um, when Malcolm Allen came on, he said it, he actually signed under him and Mick McCarthy signed the same day under Bob Pearson. Yeah. Bob, they, they give Bob the money to get a couple of players in, but we couldn't uh, prevent the inevitable when we relegated and never been back since, mate, since that, that time. But funny one I wanted to ask you about is, you know, you talked about earlier, I was playing football in the car park at, you know, um, Stamford Bridge. Just like old school football, like this is the most random thing I've ever seen. So I was looking through the Mill History site earlier, looking at the games you played and the years you was there, and it said Man City FA Cup, Man City FA Cup, right? And then it said underneath that, Man City FA Cup. I was like, what has happened here? Anyway, I've researched it. So we drew at Main Road in the FA Cup, got them back to the den and drew. And then on a coin toss, we won the right to play the second replay. At the den, I didn't even know that was a thing. Back no, I then. didn't know that was. I didn't know that was a thing either. <laughs> That's something I've learned. Unless I've got that completely wrong, but I don't think I have. So on a coin toss, so like it's only just a penalty shootout or you know whatever. The, a coin toss. We played Man City three times in the same season in the wow. FA Cup. Absolute madness. Yeah. But um, we're going to get on to now, Bruce Rioch. He has not had good coverage on this podcast, even Colin <laughs> Cooper. Even Colin Cooper, who liked, you know, he brought him to the club, said it was very diplomatic. He said he didn't help himself. So Bruce no. comes in, and uh, well, he said you like the way he played. I thought that because you, you was a very well, when, he, when he first when he first came in, the way he was talking, the way he was saying things, and everything like that. It just, I just felt it, it, it would be really good. The football wise, he wanted to play mm. was great. It was just that he just could not uh, motivate players because the way he talked to them and the way he treated them it was um it was all round you know it's just it was just strange it was just strange it was i know it's it's it probably sound really petty i remember ian wright doing an article about it um after he left there arsenal um but it was right you know you, you, if you come in in the morning and you sort of say to him morning boss and he ignores you then you think, oh, fuck you, basically. Sorry about my language. That's right. So then you um, you don't say anything to him the next day, and then he'll go to you, oh, morning, Ian. And you're like, well, what the fuck's going on? You know, you just yeah. don't know what's going on. Or you, I, I was playing because Cooper was injured, so I still ended up playing left back. 
and playing a few games and then all of a sudden because I think my contract was up as well so I was going in and speaking to him and saying you know can we sort out the contract blah 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 and when I went in to see him and I'd been playing like probably six ten games before that went in to see him the next day I was not involved with the first team and didn't play the next game so I was training with the reserves just because I went in to talk to him about a contract. And that's the way he was. He was, yeah. you know, weird. And he wouldn't let us wear jeans to training. Um, I think we have a control thing by the sound. I mean, it was, it was. It's just very, like, there's absolutely yeah. no need to, to go morning and then like he blank you. I'll be yeah, like, he blair. Yeah. What the f- hey, man, and then, but the next morning he would then say morning to me. And I'd it's be like, a little bit like, mind oh. games, isn't it? Like a little bit mind games and control. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was, it was strange and it, uh, I mean, I was—I must admit, I was pleased when he went to Arsenal. Not going to yeah. lie. Like you said, though, on the on the flip side, like you said, he, the way he spoke and the way he wanted to play, you liked. And we did play some really good football that season. We scored some really good goals as well. We had a good side, and you yeah. were never present. You played forty-eight games that season. Didn't I know? That's what I'm saying. That's how yeah. you know stupid it was. You know, I played the majority of the games. I think some of the games I didn't play was a one was because I went to see him just to just you know. Nothing, not have, not having an argument, just politely talking about my contract, you know, saying, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm playing all the games, blah blah blah." What do you think? And he was like, "No." And say next, next, and then Steve Harrison next morning would come in and say, "Ah, oh, uh, Dozer, you're you're with the reserves today." And I'd be like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Strange. So, well, two questions there, and one of them you got got Steve Harrison written here. A lot of the players said he was that he was a good one to have. For all the shit you got off Bruce, not only was he a great coach, Harrison, but he was a bit of a mediator. He softened the blow a bit with the players. He was comical. He was what? he was hilarious. I mean, it, to be fair, I think if he wasn't there, I think we probably would have rioted and probably you know committed Harry Carey or something. It was yeah, he was he was he was funny. One of the funniest fellas I I've, I've ever seen in football. To be fair. We've heard, yeah, we've heard some great stories. You haven't got a, you, we, we can spare you from telling us what Harry got sacked because John Goodman's already told us that story. But um, yeah, he was a, but he's a good coach as well, wasn't he? He was, he was a good coach. Although you know, I mean, he'll always be rem- remembered for his uh, his jokes <laughs> and things he did. But yeah, he was a good coach as well. Did you get your contract sorted in the end then? Um, yeah, once Bruce went, um, as soon as oh, he right. went, and then Mick McCarthy took over. I just went in to speak, obviously, because Mick was still there and playing anyway. Yeah. And um, I went in to see Mick and he said, yeah, no, we sort that out straight away. Oh, hang on. So, so we're, ju- we're, we're jumping well ahead then because that first season, so you, he must have made you on a bit of string about that contract for a long time. Yeah, yeah, it was virtually the whole season. Well, and, and some, I think, because it was yeah, the 1991 season, this is the season we get to the playoffs against Brighton. This is the season Teddy Sheridan scores 40 goals. Yeah. Um, and then Bruce was still the manager ne- uh, next season up until I think about November, until he got sacked. Let's talk about Teddy and his forty goals just quickly. I yeah, mean, everyone no. knows what a player he went on to become, but forty goals is a couple of hat tricks in there as well. Some going in it. Yeah, no. So yeah, that was the season. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I was hanging on a string basically. Winker. Well, um, the playoffs, Brighton. To, to be fair, we, we we were disappointed, I think, that we didn't actually go up without having to get in the playoffs, to be honest. Um, we just, I just don't think we performed. We just did not perform in, in the games we we needed to. That was the problem. Maybe, you know, maybe a bit of pressure. I, I, I don't know. I mean, we were all up for it and all, you know, we all tried our best, but we just mm. did not play to uh, the standards that we had set all season, really. I think the damage, a bit of a theme with us and playoffs, the damage was done in the first leg, wasn't it? Um, yeah, no, it was. Was it was, the Goldstein yeah. ground then, was it, I think? I think it was, was it 3-1 we lost? 3-1, but I, I remember, uh, this is another game I remember as a kid, because it was a night game, I'd not been to many night games, but it was end of season, so it was light when I got there, and there was so many people, and I remember tr- me trying me here, trying to, well, if we score one at this minute, score one at that minute, and of course, John McGinn, John McGinley, I was calling John McGinn for sure. Uh, got the opening goal. Yeah. Um, what was he like, McGinley? He was supposed to be. I was trying to get him on. He said he'd come on, then he didn't answer the phone. What was he like as a player? He scored a lot of goals. Yeah, he was John a good McGinley. player. Yeah, been? John McGinley. He was a good player actually. 
He was he was yeah. character as well, but yeah, he was a good player. So yeah, we had you know a decent decent. We had a we had a very good side. Um, and as I say, we we were. I mean, the weird thing was, although we lost three one at Brighton, we still felt confident because we had such a good season that we would do well at the Den. But mm. we were probably worse at the Den than we were at. At Brighton, to be honest, so I think we lost. Two, we scored first. I think we lost two one that night. We scored first. Yeah, remember he was called Robert Codner or something. He, I remember him scoring at the cold blow and he ran all the way up to the little section of away fans. Because bringing back some memories for me, that didn't know I could remember that far back either. Anyway, so that's like you know we was in the top flight under the dock. Um, he gets sacked. We go down. We have a good bash here the first season. Then in the summer, we. Must have been pretty fa- like, you know, favourable to go up. And then we sign Alex Ray, Colin Cooper. Uh, we get good youngsters coming through, John Goodman, Andy Roberts. But we just capitulated, mate. It did not go well. And Bruce loses his job. Yeah. Well, uh, I think, still- I think to be honest, it was a little bit of um, him, to be honest. I just think the players were not probably playing to their best because mm. um, he just wasn't getting the best out of them. Well, the day he lost his job. It was six one and white Pompey. You wasn't in the squad that day. Well, yeah. that says it all, really, doesn't it? <laughs> my, you know, did did did. I'm not saying that I didn't give my all every time I played. I still did, even yeah. under him. But um, it, it's difficult if if you just. It's it's really hard. I mean, it's hard to to sort of say really how you really feel. You know, when you're getting treated like 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 that, really, like a piece of dirt, really, at times. Yeah, um, it's so but, strange because you you hear sometimes about um, you know players the manager wants them out the door so they'll make them train with the twenty threes or they'll they'll do this and do that and make them come in early and leave late but you actually played like eighty odd games under Bruce Rehock straight <laughs> so you wouldn't treat your your first I mean you wouldn't treat anyone like that personally I wouldn't but to do it to your you know one of the first names on the team sheet every week. Yeah, I no, it was, it's, it, it was bizarre. I remember, I remember one game. I had, um, I think it was not long after that with the Steve Harrison, where he came and said, "Oh, you're with the reserves." Um, but I think the following following week, I was I was invited. Obviously, trained again with the first team, and I and I was told by the physio, "You're you're playing," not by the manager, but by the by the physio, because I always used to clean my own boots, so I used to bring them in. So he said, oh, don't forget your boots, will you? So I turned up and he's gone, have you got your boots? I went, no, why? To the physio. And I thought, oh, I can't do this to the physio. I said, yeah, I have. But he but he never actually ever spoke to me and said, you know, you'll be playing. I'd, yeah. I'd gone from one week to not being with the first team. And then the following week, I was back back playing again. It's just strange. I don't yeah. think he was alone in that. I remember... I mean, literally everyone we've had on didn't like him. And I remember, I can't remember who told us, I think it might have been Brian Ornett. They think, I think, was it Bruce Rio actually had a punch up once at half time of Paul Kerr in a change room or something like that? Just because I, the don't, way I you... don't remember that, but yeah, I could imagine Orney. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it, Orney. So Bruce sacked. Um, he obviously wasn't in the squad that day. That was a long time ago. Do you remember like hearing the news or? Um, to be fair, I was, I think I smiled quite a bit after that, I think. That was. I mean, obviously, I didn't know Mick was going to get the job straight away, but I, yeah. it was just the weight off my shoulders. Although, as I say, I was still playing, and I played majority of the the games. Um, it's just just that you know that him knowing he's not going to be there, and it takes a lot of pressure off of everything else, really. Yeah, exactly. You can start properly enjoying your football again, and uh, not have people fucking blank me in the corridor anymore. That's just strange. That, but so big Mick comes in. Um, first job in management, he's still still going strong. I think enough he's in work at the minute uh, in management, but he's still doing punditry and bits and bobs. He had a great career as a manager. He, to be fair, he was um, he did really well. Um, he took mm-hmm. to it like duck to water, to be honest. Um, yeah, no, I I, I I thought he was really good. I mean, as I say, Terry Venables, yeah, my my favourite, but um, Mick wasn't far behind, to be honest. Oh really? What was it? What was the transition like for you? Like, well, it must be um, difficult for him. But one minute he's your he's your teammate, next minute you got to call him Gaffer. To be fair, easy really, because um, yeah. because as I say, we had virtually we, we'd all played played with each other. Um, I just think it's sometimes easier because you you know what he's like. 
you know what to expect from him and as a as a player and a manager he always wanted to win um so yeah no he was he was good and and he actually turned the team around and we actually played some i thought some really good football his first full season our last season at the at the old dead i rem- i know we didn't finish in the playoffs but i just remember it that's the first time i used to see us properly on telly quite a lot on a sunday we scored loads of goals morally and goodman um you know we six and five watford we beat uh, we beat the enemy 2-1 at home which is always a good game to yeah. win um he was playing really well under mick scoring a lot of goals weren't we yeah to be fair we were uh, we were disappointed we never went up um um to be honest i mean we would say beating teams for fun a lot of the times mm. and uh we just didn't sustain it really that was the only thing you um do you think it might have been something to do with maybe not subconsciously like the the awareness of hang on we're changing ground after all these years we're going to a new stadium was it unsettling i suppose it wasn't really for a player was it um i don't i i, I wouldn't put it down to that really um i don't mm. think it was i mean it was it was difficult in the aspect that um i think when the for, it's probably worse for the fans, to be honest, because I, f- I felt at the old den they knew where they were, whereas when they yeah. turned up to new at the new ground at the new den, it was sort of well, where do we go? Where should we stand? Um, what should <laughs> we do? You know, so I, f- I felt sorry for the fans a little bit to start off with. When you said you got your contract sort of Mick, what was that another? Was that a three year deal or something like that? I think, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think a three three year something like that. So it sort of took me to the end of my career, really. A couple of things I want to ask you about from the, that season. Uh, of course, the last ever game at the Den, which we'll get on to. But before that, the 2-1 win over West Ham. I don't know if you... I forgot to send you the photo, sorry. But um, it'll appear on the screen during the edit. Uh, a a, a fracas, shall we call it. All the players. And you're, you're, in the mic- you're in the middle. Malcolm looks like he's absolutely fuming. But a day you will remember, surely, is the um, the last ever one at the Den. The last ever game at the Den. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was uh, am- amazing. Um, the atmosphere was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. Shame the result didn't go away. We lose to Bristol. No, Rome. but that's, yeah. that's football, unfortunately, isn't it? It was, uh, never never does go the, the way it should, does it, after time? So, no, especially yeah, with us, to actually, mate. Just to actually play there and be part of that was uh, was amazing. Nice. So we moved to the new day, 93-94. You only played 23 games this season. Um was there injuries involved, or was that yeah, yeah, that like was... the emergence of Ben Thatcher as well? Yeah, well, um, no, to be fair, I think it was more more me, more me with my um, my knee, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I was sort of coming to the stage where it was, I'd have a like a arthroscopy and then miss a few games and be back again and play in and sort of feel like it go go again. So so yeah, was it? it was more was it more. Knee? Sorry, what was it with your knee? Uh, it was just wear and tear, basically. The um, basically the cartilage had, had, was wearing away. All oh, right, okay. It caused you that caused you a lot of further problems. It did, yeah, yeah. So it's running down all them touchlines, mate, flying past fullbacks. Um, <laughs> so, did you play in the um, the Sporting Lisbon game? In the Sporting Lisbon game, I think I did. Yes, I yeah. think. Bobby Robson was their manager. A young Luis Figo playing for Sporting Lisbon as well. Yeah. I can't remember it, but I'm sure I did play in it. I'm sure I did. As I say, I'm terrible remembering things now. <laughs> oh, dear. Never mind. Um, uh, what was I going to say next? Oh, yeah. So, we did... Um, yeah, you didn't play You didn't play in the playoffs that, side, that season either. I think you might have been uh, injured No, again. I missed it. No, that was, that was... Again, that was through the injury, so... So that was, as I say, disappointing as well because we uh, we probably should have won that as well. Yeah, I you know you missed the Boxing Day game against Crystal Palace, the old Etienne Rivera overhead kick. Remember him, ET? He's been on. Yeah, that. always disapp- disappointing to miss the Palace game, being that I was sort of born around that around Crystal Palace era. Area, so yeah. Was you a so, Palace fan growing up? Um, was I a Palace fan? No, I wasn't. No, I knew I knew a lot of Palace fans. Um, I, remember, I always remember my my warm ups at Palace were were very strange. They were basically just stretching on the touch line, talking to people I knew in the stands, basically. So, so yeah, it was a it was a different warm up then. And uh, one game we did play in that season was uh, one of probably the biggest one 
from the uh, new stadium at the time. We lost to Arsenal in the FA Cup, one 0 Yes, yeah. Was that was that the was that? I'm trying to think. Was that the game where Les Bryant? No, it wasn't. Les Bryant hit the scored goal. He did score a goal against Arsenal in that was in, the uh, that was the League Cup. We seem to play Arsenal every year in whatever cup, but we that did, was didn't we? Cup at, um, at the uh, Highbury, but yeah, this one was at the Den. And they beat us 1 0 late, late doors. I can't remember who scored for them that day, but you had a couple of encounters with Ian Wright later on in the uh, cup matches in the season after as well. There's another yeah. photo of you, actually. I will put it on the screen now. I, again, I couldn't find it this morning, but you, um, you, Casey Keller, and Ian Wright, you look proper angry at Ian Wright for whatever, for whatever reason. Yeah, I think he kicked me. I think I've got that. I think my, um, my kids have got that picture as well, I think. Um, and I, I know I've got it somewhere. I think I was just like pointing at him and having a go at him. I think, if I remember rightly. So yeah, I think actually, I think I see your boy Stewie um, share it on uh, on his social media not too long ago. But uh, yeah, so moving into the ninety four ninety five season, it's your last season at the club. Um, you only play eighteen games this season. Was it was the injuries just niggling yeah? Away? No, my, unfortunately, my knee was sort of you know I'd be sort of come back have a have a clean out and come back again um had the uh, specialist say to me uh this is the last time we're going to do this um he said you know what what are you thinking of doing when you finish your career i was sort of uh draw dropped and sort of thinking oh my god what am i going to do um so yeah so it wasn't a wasn't a good 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 thing to hear but um as i say i played still played 18 games uh, Mick, Mick was good in the fact that um, sometimes we'd have sort of two games a week, or if he'd bring me off with you know seven, with twenty five minutes to go or things yeah, like that, so I could well. get through. So uh, training, training, I didn't train as much as I was. I was cycling, swimming, and then doing the odd training session here and there. So, so yeah, so I wasn't. Um, Doing as much training and things like that, really, either. So, how old was you at this point? How what? Sorry, how old was you at this point, roughly? Do you remember? Um, I was only th- coming up. Th- I was thirty-two when I retired. So yeah, thirty-one, thirty-two. Well, not, yeah, not too bad. Then you had, you had a, yeah, so you had a good, you had a good old go, it mate, didn't you? So Five hundred. Well, uh, yeah, I, had a go. I mean, it could could have been a, you know, it could have been a lot worse. I look back at, you know, when I first joined Millwall with, you know, Nicky Coleman, how, you know, he he done his cruciate uh, ligaments and that and never never played again so so you know but in, in that way I was I was lucky it was sort of later on in my career rather than you know when Nick Nick started out so yeah and then say like you didn't play as many games in your last season however what a way to bail out you, you know you was involved in that cup run well, Chelsea. that was that was the thing. I mean, it was it was a shame in the way because we we played Chelsea in the I think it was a replay, wasn't it, in the week on the Tuesday? Yeah, you got and, substituted, didn't you? Well, I got substituted, yeah, uh, which was was fine because I because I I remember warming up and like struck, kicking the ball and I was I, I was in pain with my knee at times and I felt should I should I be out here? Um, but I didn't. I don't think I let anyone down and I think I still put in a decent performance but um, yeah I, I knew there was it wasn't right um, but then obviously we we won and then the, the, the Saturday was the next round of the FA Cup and it was against QPR um, so I was sort of I had three days to try and sort of get my knee down because it just swelled up basically um, but unfortunately I I I couldn't. I just felt it was probably the wrong thing to do to to play, which was disappointed because it would have been under a fitting way to finish. Being that I played against Chelsea, who I started with, and then it would have been QPR and Mill, uh, Millwall. So, um, yeah. but yeah, no. Looking back at it, I wish I had sort of played now because we were yeah. awful against QPR. <laughs> as soon as you, yeah, I just think of Damien Webber conceding that penalty, but. That was so. That so for those who don't know that game against Chelsea, I think I'm right in saying that was your last ever appearance. Yes. Yeah. So it was a shame. Obviously, injury stopped you. But when you can say people, the last ever game I played for me all was the penalty shooter. That was chaos, wasn't it? That night. Yeah. No, I mm. mean it's it's not it's not a bad way to go out against Chelsea. So. No, um, definitely not, mate. And then what you just saw you just saw the rest of your contracts out injured. 
Um, well, basically, I think they 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 paid paid me off. I think, um, oh. and then that was it. Then really, I you know I was hoping to try and sort of t- maybe get involved with the youth team because um, Tom mm. Wally was there, and I was sort of joining in with the training and things like that. Um, and then I think Tom was Tom. I think went back to Watford. Um, and I think he did say to to Mick about maybe giving me a a chance to you know take over and everything. But I think uh, Mick decided not to. Um, I don't know why. Um, but it is what it is, you know. Um, he obviously had reasons that he didn't. But it was disappointing in that aspect that I didn't get the chance. But it would have been nice to have had a go. Mm. Um, but never, never mind, one of them things. Are you still involved, Mars? I was going to ask you if you go down the den, but I know you do because I've seen you down there a couple of times. Yeah, I've been down there a few. I haven't been um, for a while, to be to be fair. I keep meaning to. Um, mm. I probably will go um, this this year at some point. Uh, obviously, probably go with my son, no doubt. Super Stu. Yeah, because he, he's a he's a mad mad Millwall man. So. Yeah, he is. He absolutely loves it, doesn't he? Top man he is. So. I always ask these questions at the end. I'm going to add one into that, actually. What's the, the three best players you've played with? Is this at Millwall? Yeah, go on then. we do Millwall. All right, at Millwall. Three best players. Okay. Well, you've got to put Teddy, I would say, in amongst that. Yep. Um, and I don't think he, this, this guy got as much credit as he probably should have, but I would say Terry Herlock. Yep. And let me see who else would I put in there. Yourself? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't put myself there. Uh, nowhere near. Um, there was. I'm trying to think who I. Who else? I, I mean, to be fair, I would probably say Cascarino. Yeah, Cas. Um, I mean, there was. We had some. We had some good players um, in, in the new den that season with Alex Ray, people like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think, I think to be fair, I'd go Cascarino, Terry Herlock and Teddy Sheringham, to be honest. Nice. Well, what about some, you know, if you could, I know you was at the club a long time, a standout memory from your time at the club. Standout memory. Um, I would say probably the last game at the Den, without a doubt, although obviously I hadn't been there that long. Um, it's still a memorable memorable occasion and probably actually the first game at the new den because obviously that's a new totally new ground and mm. um that was probably spectacular in 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 that aspect as well so yeah then them two probably um and also probably my first ever game for qpr probably rotherham away <laughs> oh, milmore uh, there you go so nice nice uh local derby <laughs> <laughs> um the question I always finish with, if you could meet up tomorrow with three of your ex Millwall teammates, you can have a game of golf, you can go do go to the pub, do whatever you like, but which three would you take with you? Well, I meet, I meet up, we, I still play golf with Phil, which I think you know because you spoke to him not long Phil ago. Phil Barber, yeah. Uh, Phil Barber. Um, who else? I wouldn't, I don't think I would play golf with Teddy Sheringham because I think he's too good. Um, <laughs> I think there's quite a lot of them are too good. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a hard one because there's only three. Um, Who was your closest to at the club, really? Yes, the closest probably is, is Phil. Really, um, I mean, I don't. To be fair, I mean, I we got a WhatsApp group, uh, Millwall WhatsApp group. But I only really just sort of watch, watch and look, see what's going on and laugh because a lot of them are there from when they all very first started, so they're all very friendly with each other and they know each other so well but you know it's quite humorous and i quite enjoy watching them and seeing what they're saying and, and all <laughs> things like that so so yeah so yeah i would say it's hard to to pick another two other than you know realistically me and phil knew each other quite well yeah, yeah. Um, and all that really so we definitely know bruce real won't get the invite mate <laughs> I wouldn't. No, I probably wouldn't go with Bruce Rioch. No, definitely not. <laughs> well, listen, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on again. Thanks for coming back and uh, doing the longer formatted one. Really enjoyed no your worries. time. Take thank thank you. Take care. Cheers, Dorsey. Thanks, mate. Bye, mate.